I hate to say it, but black culture is absolute garbage. The fact that we can have our kids running in the streets without any supervision, without any morale, without any parents telling them, without any strong leaders, any strong fathers telling them, hey, maybe it's not a good idea for you to be breakdancing on top of a car in the middle of Times Square. This is something that needs to be addressed. And I'm sorry, this person in DC, this council member, he doesn't understand the fact that yes, I'm sure you are tired of the violence. I'm sure you're tired part of the depravity and all of the problems that are going on in the black community. In this case, DC, my hometown, town that I was born in and raised and spent a lot of time in, know a little bit about. And it's only gotten worse from the 90s to where it is now. I never could have imagined that DC could have gotten as bad as it has gotten. In fact, the entire black community, I could never have imagined in my wildest days of being a radical activist back in the 90s underneath Marion Barry. Yes, I helped in his campaign. Would I have ever imagined that the black community would have sunk to such low levels? This is absolutely a, a, a horrible atrocity, not only for the black community, but for America. We're being deprived of talented young people who can be benefit from from what this country has to offer and this country can benefit from what they have to offer outside of shooting a basketball through a hoop. Look, I am really tired and sick of having to deal with these kinds of stories. I wanted to do a story separate from this, but this came across my feed and I have to talk about it. This is something that's going on in my hometown, DC. And mind you, I don't live there anymore. As much as I would like to live there in the days when it was its heyday, I, I can't, it's just impossible. And so for me, this is just tragic because it looks like this gentleman, the city council member, it appears that he has his head in the right place. It looks like he's a young guy and maybe he's an idealist and maybe he just doesn't understand yet about the reality of what's going on in the black community. I don't know. This guy's name is Trayon White Sr., a Democrat who represents Ward 8, said Monday, the crime is out of control and getting worse by the day. We must declare an emergency regarding the crime and violence in our neighborhoods and act urgently. It may be time to call the National Guard to protect the children and innocent people that are losing their lives to this senselessness. I agree 100% on this, but really it never should have gotten to this. I mean, you're talking about the National Guard. I mean, is it really a war zone? Well, maybe it is a war zone, but the fact is the National Guard can't stay there forever. And he does go into other things too. He does mention that, hey, this is gonna take more than just politics. This is gonna take more than just policies. So he did come at it at the right angle. But the fact is, is that something's gonna have to be done across the board dealing with this horrible and deplorable black culture, this thug, disgusting culture that is pervasive. And it's so bad now that they are operating with impunity. We're seeing footage after footage after footage of people doing bad things, going into stores, stealing, looting, and all this sort of things. And then they're getting away with it. We see security people, personnel, standing there watching people with carts and barrels of stuff and leaving stores and no one is lifting a finger. Why? Because they're afraid that if they were to say something or to tackle somebody, or if they were to, heaven forbid, cause someone to stub a toenail, then all of a sudden, guess what? They're gonna get fired. They're gonna get canceled. They're gonna have the whole reputation demolished in media. They're gonna be called a racist and all of these things because of this disgusting, sick narrative that is pervasive across the, the board in many, many areas, not just in the race related issues. We can go into the environment, we can go to other things too, but sticking solely to just this whole race thing, it's gotten totally out of control. We have raised a generation of people who are totally entitled. They feel that they can do anything they wanna do. They can walk down the street because you know what? I'm a victim and if I'm a victim, you are the oppressor and therefore you owe me and I can do what I want and you can't say anything. And if you do, how dare you, you racist. That is how it is. And I'll tell you one thing, when I was growing up as a young radical in the hood, not really so much in the hood, and I was more in the suburbs, but I dealt a lot in DC. I dealt a lot in the community out there. And I dealt a lot with schools and high schools and going into communities and trying to raise awareness. But we were not talking about, <laughs> we're not talking about how bad Whitey is. We were talking about how we need to empower ourselves, how we have to have small businesses, how we need to uplift our community, how we need to have strong fathers. This is Democrats were saying this back in the day.
Go back and look at some Spike Lee movies back in the day, like let's say Do the Right Thing or go back and look at School Days or go back and look at some John Singleton films. Go look at Boys in the Hood. That particular film there, we have Lawrence Fishburne talking to, you know, his son and his buddies about how things have to be changed. And it was internal. It was not blaming the whitey as much as it was we had to lift ourselves up. In terms of people like Malcolm X and his philosophy in terms of that as well, you know, it wasn't this victim mentality. It was like, look guys, you know, let's do something with our lives. And to me, that message has been totally lost. And I think a lot of it has come from the Obama administration and what they imposed in terms of, hey, you know, the whole Trayvon thing, the whole beer summit thing, how you acted stupidly, that sort of thing. All that thing went against his campaign promises as to keep things, you know, even keel in terms of the whole uh, splitting America up based on skin color. He totally went against those promises and went totally radical, especially in this second term. And so those kind of things helped to push the narrative. And of course you had BLM and all these things that happened and the progressive movement pushing in 1619, pushing in CRT, pushing in all of this collectivism of this joint collective thing that we all have to share uh, all the guilt for everybody. No matter who you are, you must share in that guilt. The problem is the narratives are wrong and the history is wrong. And it's a revisionist history that's based on lies from people who wanted to tear this country down from the very beginning. These are rich, white liberal elitists who had a plan in place for decades and people have not caught on to this yet. A few have. And if you want to know more about this, check out the film Uncle Tom 2. Check that film out. They would go through the entire history of that and tell you more about how we are being duped. Here it says, I am calling on the community and the stakeholders to join us for a shooting response to speak out against the violence in our city. Elected officials cannot solve this alone. I agree. Uh, this is the congressman going on. He said this, I'm sorry, this council member, this effort requires the input and cooperation of parents, students, churches, businesses, civic associations, and even those responsible for the violence. I can't agree more. How about let's take these people who are committing the violence and putting them in jail. That's another thing. When people are arrested for crimes, they're getting off scot-free. This system is a two-tier system that if you do something to another person and your skin color is dark, all of a sudden, guess what? You get a lighter sentence. At least it appears to be that way to me. And if you are a white person doing something, anything, you get the book thrown at you. You know why? Because, well, you know, we have to go off these narratives from off these narratives from CRT and 1619, and therefore we have to punish you because of the crimes of your ancestors. And therefore we can all get along because we are actually paying reparations, at least from a social justice standpoint. It's absolutely ridiculous. He goes on and say here, he says, we all must do this together. Eh, I stand ready to make our streets safe for all who walk them, not only in Ward 8, also the district. I have a picture of Ward 8 right here. This is Ward 8. At the bottom section right here, the pink section at the bottom, Southeast DC. I grew up not far from here, nine miles Southeast from there down in PG County. And, and I saw a lot of things going up in the eighties and the nineties. And that area is a very, very rough area. Area. And so that area there has always been the blunt end of jokes. Southeast DC, of course, you know, you always have to have a problem there. Ward 8 is always going to be bad. But that area has de deteriorated over the years because we're having a generation of fatherlessness in that community and we're having fatherlessness grazing other people who are without fathers. And that being done, we have a second generation of people who were raised from a generation prior who didn't have that. So now we're dealing with two generations removed from no fathers. And now we are seeing the ramifications from this and you throw in the fact that we have a media, you throw in the fact that we have an administration, you throw in the fact that we have this particular persona that people are victims and need to be helped and that anything they do can be excused because of their circumstances. That to me is inherently racist and it goes back to a humanist, socialist, secularist type of philosophy and it is wrong and it needs to stop. And unfortunately, I do not think that this council member is ever going to get that because that is the crux of the problem. I don't know if they're going to have the will or the stomach to deal with that because it's going to have to involve some serious conservative principles. And by the way, if you mention the church, what is the church doing? If the church were to truly stick by what the principles of the Bible said, then that would fix a lot of problems. But unfortunately, the church, the black church is not doing their job. They are kowtowing to the Democrat party, doing their bidding, not knowing that this Democrat party that's running these churches are actually run by Marxists.